welcome everyone. Uh, so Jill, we do the presentation today, uh, the workshop. Uh, and so we will see the 3W maps, 3W or 4W maps, and how to do them with a good JS um, using the, the limits of labeling of good JS to, to do so. So we, we hope that you will enjoy this workshop. So Jill, I let you the floor. OK. Thank you uh, very much, Marie. So glad to see you. Uh, I can already see that there are so people, some people that I already saw yesterday. So glad to know that some of you are uh, interested in JS and want to learn maybe some tips or some improvement in this uh, software. So uh, as Marie said today, uh, we'll be working on the, the 3W, 3W maps. And uh, especially, we'll try to push uh, QGIS to its limit. We'll see uh, what I mean uh, with this sentence. And uh, work also on uh, advanced label and uh, data display in QGIS. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's uh, relevant because uh, maybe I saw some of you yesterday, but uh, as a virtual room table, maybe you could uh, just introduce uh, yourself in the chat uh, for uh, the other participants uh just to have some uh, interaction uh, for now so uh in the meantime uh, some uh, rules or some precision about the session so uh this session uh uh i want it to be as interactive as possible so do not hesitate uh, to to raise your hand if you want to speak to to type in the chat any question or anything you want to add, remarks, uh, and so on. And uh, we'll have some uh, exercise uh, time. So uh, I've shared with you a project uh, by mail on uh, this weekend, I think it was on Saturday. So uh, if, you, if you have not done yet, uh, if you have not done it yet this uh, folder, please do so and uh, have uh, QGIS open because we'll, uh, we'll go on it uh, just after. And so uh, today uh, we'll be working on the three and four W maps. So don't worry, we'll see uh, what it is uh, just after. We're also focusing on uh, the use of icon fonts in uh, QGIS and uh, some advanced uh, label uh, expression uh, linked to uh, these icon fonts. We'll also see some uh, easy updating uh, processes uh, on uh, QGIS with our use case. And uh, just to mention that uh, everything that we'll see today, uh, I may go quickly on some aspects, uh, but don't worry, uh, we are making some documentation about it. Uh, actually, we'll make a blog uh, that, will, uh, be, uh, that will be on our Carto blog. Uh, you will have the link uh, in the presentation and uh, you will have everything uh, to uh, create your icon font and make some uh, super value, super labels and maps uh, in QGIS and also RGIS. So just uh, for you to know, uh, the folder that I've shared uh, in the, uh, is basically uh, this one. Uh, in this one, I have a project for QGIS. So today we'll use the first one, 2W underscore workshop. Uh, and we have some data, some resources. And one thing that you need to have uh, installed on your computer for today's session is uh, our icon fonts. I will go further in details about it, but uh, you just need uh, for our exercise to uh, have installed uh, the 3W underscore icons underscore workshop uh, fonts because we'll be using it. So be sure, uh, maybe you are on your own computer, but if you're on an office, uh, let's say computer, be sure to have it uh, installed uh, for uh, all users. That, that's just uh, something you need to know. And uh, you need to launch QGIS, QGIS after uh, have this uh, install. Okay. Uh, before uh, going uh, any further uh, for the introduction, so uh, I see some, uh, that some of you okay, present themselves. 
Uh, and I think, uh, Quentin, you, you want to know if some are not speaking French, maybe uh, if you want, you want to speak uh, to, sorry, to, to switch to French. But actually, I know that uh, because the session is recorded, we'll need to, to keep uh, in English uh, anyhow. Uh, so, um, Marie, could you share the link uh, of, uh, of the, the poll uh, on the chat, please? And I don't know if Marie's still here. Okay, so I will do it myself. Don't worry. Just let me copy paste. It's okay, Maria. I'm okay. Just a few questions to introduce the session to know um, to know what's your uh, your background uh, with uh, this topic. So please uh, just okay. So please uh, go into the link and uh, you will see a question. Just answer it, and I will have live uh, response on my uh, on my screen normally. So. I hope so. Let's a few few minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the two one that already respond to to the poll. So um, I okay. So I can see that some of you didn't know. Uh, okay. Most of you for now uh, never heard of uh, 3W or 4W maps. So uh, that's nice because uh, we'll, uh, I will show you some example and explain it to you uh, right now. Uh, I'm just going into the question number two, uh, waiting a few, few seconds uh, more. Uh, so question number two will be about the icon fonts uh, and its use on QGIS because I don't know if you already uh, used one or made one. So switching to uh, second uh, question. It's the same here. It uh, should be uh, updating in your screen. Okay, nice. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, Joan, I think that's just, I'm doing it again, just in case. And uh, tell in the chat if it's not working. So for now, I can see that some of you uh, already used the one and some of you uh, did not. Uh, so today we'll not see how to create one, uh, but we will definitely use a custom uh, icon fonts. We will see that there are not only custom ones, uh, but uh, it's definitely something to know uh, in QGIS and uh, and how to use it for uh, for this kind this kind of maps. Okay, uh, switching to uh, the last one, uh, last question, and then I will introduce. To the value maps. Last question is uh, mostly about about the expressions on QGIS. Uh, I don't know if you what are you use of, the, of it, if you're using it a lot or not, uh, even for some uh, field calculation or for some labeling. I don't know. So okay, of course, uh, everyone already used uh, some QGIS expression. So that's good because today's session is more for uh, people that have some background uh, with this, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll go with it uh, together. Okay, so now uh, switching to my introduction. So first uh, going with 3W or 4W maps. So, okay, now let's stop uh, talking about this, uh, this world and explain maybe what it is. Uh, 3W the stands for uh, who does what where and 4W stands for who does what where and when. So actually this is a well-known uh, map for uh, the uh, humanitarian actor or in the humanitarian sector because this is basically uh, the map that we'll see uh, mostly for one country or for one area in, uh, in a country. 
uh, that will show uh, operational presence uh, by sector on maybe the location uh, uh, of partners or uh, any uh, organization uh, during uh, an, emer an emergency. So, so uh, it's used for uh, to help maybe identify some uh, some gaps or some potential partners. Uh, it's like uh, an overview of what's going on uh, on the humanitarian side uh, inside uh, a country. So actually, uh, OCHA, for example, is making a, a lot uh, of this map, and uh, it's maybe one of the most used map uh, in uh, in the sector. And it's uh, mostly uh, dedicated to uh, in-country uh, responder to understand better uh, what's happening and where is it happening. But it's also uh, for global or HQ-based uh, humanitarian that want a better understanding on some situation. But uh, what we are seeing more and more uh, is that uh, some global audience uh, is really having some interest about this kind of maps and maybe some uh, non-humanitarian organization. For example, uh, with Carto NG, we worked with the AFD, uh, the French Development Agency, so l'Agence Française du Développement. And uh, for example, they were really interested uh, for uh, Tunisia to have uh, some overview on uh, all their projects uh, inside the country. And in fact, this is the kind of map uh, we made for them. So this is actually why uh, it could be interesting to see uh, how we're making these kind of maps using uh, QGIS. And finally, what uh, do we find uh, in this map? Uh, so some partners or organization, uh, the project could be name of project, type of project, uh, the start and the end uh, date of any project or uh, organization uh, in the, the area. And you can have some more information concerning a uh, number of projects or could be the uh, amount of uh, money dedicated to, to project or number of people uh, that are getting uh, any uh, any uh, project or, or whatever. So I hope this is a better understanding for you. We will see some examples just now, but uh, let me know in the chat or raise your hand if you have some more to add or some question maybe about these maps. We have some visual. Uh, here we have the one of the OCHAS 3W maps. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can also display data uh, inside the area. So, uh, for example, here we have a color uh, uh, which represents the number of uh, projects in, inside each uh, administrative uh, area. And it's also coming with a table uh, with uh, each type of project. So this is really interesting, of course, in the cluster approach uh, in the humanitarian sector. This way we can understand better uh, which sector uh, is acting uh, where uh, on the country. Uh, remember that today we are focusing on uh, labels, so let's keep an eye on that with this example. Uh, for example, uh, on the left, we have uh, some other kind of CW maps. Uh, it's cut it, but uh, you, I think it's the same kind of data that is displayed in the administrative area. And we also have the name of uh, each area and the name of uh, organization uh, in it. The left one is uh, one kind that uh, we can also find. Uh, it's really stuffy. Uh, there is a lot of thing in it. Uh, it's a table for each uh, area. This way we can have exhaustive information but maybe it's not the best for uh, for data visualization for a user. Maybe it's not the more uh, the more relevant. And finally, I think it's uh, important to mention that uh, as a lot of map today, it's going more and more uh, uh, interactive and uh, as a web web map. And uh, some dashboard are now uh, created uh, to display this. 3W or this kind of map. And uh, you will have an example uh, here. No, this is a screenshot, but you can uh, go in here and find uh, this dashboard concerning uh, Afghanistan. Okay. So 
Now, uh, as I said, we're focusing on labels. So uh, what uh, kind of labels do, do we find uh, actually in this, in this example or in this map in, in general? So first we have the table labels, as I uh, mentioned, uh, which we are not uh, working on today because uh, it's a bit too much. As I said, it's maybe not the best uh, to work on, uh, on a GIS software, but uh, it's still uh, doable. Number two, we have what I uh, call text labels, which display, uh, for example, only the name of a partner, the name of project, and so on, always with uh, the name of the area. We have number three, uh, icons labels. So this way, uh, we can understand uh, one icon is dedicated to one organization or one uh, sector uh, action. Uh, uh, on the area and uh, it's also really interesting and this is where we will uh, need maybe some icon fonts to display uh, icon uh, instead of text. and finally we can have a combination of uh, the last two uh, with text and icon uh, labels so today we'll try to see the last uh, three type on uh, QGIS, uh, how to structure your data, how to put it on QGIS, how to uh, work on the expression, and uh, then to export your maps. Before uh, going uh, in uh, QGIS, uh, important thing is to mention icon fonts. So I know with the poll that some of you uh, never used it. Uh, Basically, uh, okay, it starts to rain here, sorry, uh, I hope it's not too noisy. Uh, basically, an icon font is just uh, that any uh, letter or character in your uh, keyboard is uh, replaced by an icon. Uh, some famous icon fonts I already use in the humanitarian sector. For example, uh, Ocha is, uh, is making uh, an icon font, and I've put it in, uh, in the folder uh, shared with you if you want to, to see it. And here you have an example. For example, this is uh, the character uh, in uh, any fonts. And in this, using this font, it will display icons uh, like this one. Uh, what's uh, important to know is uh, that in our use case, uh, we will need to keep, uh, let's say, the normal letter uh, in, the in the alphabet uh, to display the name of the area like uh, in this screenshot. So one uh, good thing to do is, for example, uh, to use specific symbols, uh, such as this one, uh, to display uh, our icon. This way, we can still uh, write uh, the uh, name of uh, any area and, uh, and so on. So uh, knowing that, uh, maybe you want to, to start uh, uh, create your own icon font. So there are some free uh, web uh, pages that allows you to do that. So for example, uh, iCommune app that I've used uh, for uh, the icon font today. And uh, this is the one that you will uh, know in the, in the coming uh, tutorial that will, uh, that will uh, go out in, uh, in the Carto blog. You will see how to, to create your own, it's really easy. And you can also use Fantastic. So this is another possibility. So I hope it's more clear for the one that's never used uh, any icon font. So uh, as usual, do not hesitate if you have any question or any remarks uh, in the chat. Now, uh, one thing to important to see would be to, to understand why uh, QGIS and what will be our uh, approach uh, on it. Uh, our approach uh, would be uh, in our use case, let's say that we are a GIS officer, that we have some good background in uh, GIS, especially in, uh, in this software, QGIS. And we would like to make a first draft, make a, this map, and then share it uh, with someone, a partner, for example, uh, who would like uh, to have this map and be able to update it uh, maybe next month, maybe next year, whatever. Uh, but let's say that you have some basic knowledge of QGIS, you know how to open project, maybe how to export the map and so on. Uh, so what our approach would be, it would be for, 
of course, to use QGIS and try to push it to the maximum uh, to its capacity uh, to minimize uh, the work on the partner side. So this way, it will allow an easy uh, updating process uh, for them. So as I say, key aspects would be an easy updating process, uh, an easy shared project uh, with one folder. So we'll be working, uh, we assume that we'll be working only uh, locally on our computer today. Uh, use uh, our icon font and have a one-click export. Okay, project uh, implementation. So now uh, I will try to to have some uh, interaction with you. Uh, I don't know. Just let me know if the noise is uh, is uh, is bad because uh, it's uh, some rain outside, and as you can see, there is a window just behind me. And uh, I don't know if it's a problem for you. Okay. It's fine. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's my first question here would be uh, how to manage uh, dynamic updates and the QGIS fields. It's really uh, the basic uh, question. Uh, do not uh, be afraid. Do not don't be shy. Uh, just uh, raise your hand or type in the chat. Uh, and uh, and just let me know how to uh, connect some data for 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 me as a JS officer or for my partner, which is not uh, uh, not used to to GIS. What would be the, the way to dynamically have some updates on my on my QGIS project? Yes, Joanne, effectively, it's Normandy. Okay, content. Do not know. Does someone want to, to speak? Okay, and yes. Exactly. I think you you, you saw uh, for a, a, a bit a uh, second uh, the Excel logo. So. Yeah, I was watching very closely, so I gave <laughs> the game away. But, uh... So yes, actually the idea uh, it's, is to use uh, Excel uh, or CSV uh, format. Uh, why? Uh, because this is the best way to work uh, locally, I think, and that uh, in every organization we are using a spreadsheet uh, to store data. Uh, this said, uh, know that there are many ways uh, to have some data in our QGIS project uh, that are not uh, local. For example, uh, we could use uh, online database, uh, our local database, of course. We could, uh, we could use some uh, services stored in API and so on. Today, we'll assume that we are working only on a spreadsheet, so uh, Excel or any, uh, any tools uh, similar like this, yes. So, for example, this kind of services could be used, WFS. So, the idea would be to have our data uh, managed on Excel and uh, to be structured on it. So to have the right field and so on. And of course, to have an ID uh, to this field. So uh, this way, we can use the data on our QGIS project uh, with uh, a join. This way, we'll be joining our uh, spreadsheet to our uh, geodata layers. So this is really basic uh, in QGIS, but it's important to to be mentioned because this is the way that uh, our partner will be updating uh, updating its data. So uh, the idea would be uh, that uh, when our partner is updating the Excel file, uh, it's uh, implementing the update into uh, QGIS. So for example, one thing that can be done uh, uh, for that in QGIS is the use of uh, virtual fields. Uh, this virtual field uh, is something I, I can show you just after. Use of virtual field is really interesting because um, the difference between, uh, let's say, a, a row field in QGIS is that uh, each time we load uh, the data and we load the project, it's, it will be recalculating uh, the data into, uh, into our field. Uh, it's not the case for one row field uh, that will be calculating, for example, a sum uh, at one moment, and it will store it uh, as a number. But uh, it will be it will be it. So be sure to have uh, this kind of field inside your your project. 
and uh, and you'll be uh, you'll be set up. So before uh, going into QGIS, uh, just to be sure, so today we have some data that's uh, already uh, structured that will be joined on our geodata layers. It's already done in our project. Then we will manage a label expression. And finally, we can export our maps. So as I said, the first two parts I already done, not to last too many time, but uh, I'm just uh, showing you quickly. Okay, I will show you this uh, in QGIS, I think. Oh, you can launch QGIS if not uh, already done. So I'm working on the uh, 3.16. Uh, it's the last uh, version of QGIS, but uh, any version um, uh, more than 3.0, I think, uh, is uh, is okay for this. Uh, so I will open uh, the project, which is the first one, uh, because we'll make some uh, exercise in it. And uh, all data in here are, uh, are fake one. So don't worry, it's, uh, it's a fake country, fake name, and so on. We are no, no interest in that today. And uh, what I want to show uh, before uh, showing this second exercise is that I was talking about uh, Excel and uh, sometimes you want to use maybe a format as XLS or XLSX and uh, you may need a plugin uh, to load uh, your, uh, your sheet into uh, QGIS. Uh, usually I'm only uh, drag and dropping my, uh, my data, but uh, it's not uh, the best use. So know that you can install a plugin which is really basic, but uh, efficient. Okay, uh, it's already installed and it's called uh, Spreadsheet Layers. So uh, this way I will, have, I will have a new icon here that can allow me to load my uh, Excel, uh, Excel uh, data. Okay, for example, I will have some um, uh, visualization, preview, preview sorry, of uh, my data and I could make some uh, some change on it and so on. So it's already done on our project. And now I will be uh, showing you uh, quickly the structuration of our data. So it's, uh, yes, okay. Nice uh, remark, Mary. yes, because uh, uh, we can use uh, CSV. CSV is already managed by QGIS, but sometimes uh, uh, big projects are not stored uh, into a CSV uh, format because CSV can only manage manage one sheet uh, in our uh, in our uh, Excel uh, software. Uh, just quickly, I'm going here. Okay, so our data structuration for today. So for uh, our administrative area, we'll have first uh, some basic uh, information such as the ID uh, to make the join, uh, the name, uh, population. We'll also have some uh, project name. So uh, for uh, any organization uh, inside the area, for example. So as you can see, we can have uh, four uh, organization, uh, but with some area only have one, some have two and so on. We have a number of project by types. So uh, for example, it's like a cluster approach. Let's say we have some agriculture project, water sanitation project, education, environment, NGO, transportation, okay. And a link to that, we have uh, the uh, letter that will be associated to our icon font. So when we have one, at least one project in our area, we'll have a value uh, which is related to the icon uh, of this kind of project. So knowing that, uh, I assume that uh, this uh, icon, this uh, symbol, this letter, let's say, uh, is uh, related in my icon font to the uh, agriculture icon. So I don't know if it's clear for you, so let me know if, if, if not. But this way uh, we can say, uh, okay, we have uh, one project agriculture, so we will have one icon of agriculture inside this area. And finally, we can have a uh, project number uh, 
And this is uh, typically the, the kind of uh, virtual field that we can use in uh, QGIS that will be uh, recalculating. So we can do this uh, either in Excel before or do it in uh, QGIS uh, on our project. Okay, so knowing that, uh, uh, what would be the second exercise and the first label uh, exercise would be to create some icon uh, labels. So such as uh, this one, we would like to have the name of our area and uh, some uh, icons with uh, each type of project inside the area. So going in QGIS, um, if you don't know, just to be sure, we have two ways uh, to access to uh, expression for our label. First, if you have uh, this toolbar, just click on this icon, which is the label labeling options. It will open this sidebars for labeling. And uh, if not, you can also go on properties for our layer and into labels. And when I'm displaying a labels, let's say single one, I can click on the expression icon and it will open the uh, expression uh, window. So I will stay with the sidebar here. So uh, what could we do uh, to have the uh, label that we want? So I repeat, we would like an icon label uh, who will displaying the name of our administrative area and also all the icons uh, dedicated to uh, each type of project that we have uh, inside. So same as before, you can type, you can raise your hand, whatever, uh, and we can do this together. Don't be shy. Uh, during this time, just uh, to be sure, uh, quick presentation maybe uh, of the tool. Mari, let me know if someone is uh, raising his hand. But quick presentation no, of um, okay of uh, the expression dialogue. Uh, I think you've already encountered it, but just to be sure. So here we have uh, the uh, expression panel where we will type our expression. Uh, we have all the basic, uh, let's say, vocabulary of uh, the expression here. So first, ar arithmetic one. Uh, this one is really important. It's uh, the string concatenation. So concatenation means uh, to aggregate, to, to put after. Uh, parentheses and uh, the, how to say, yes, uh, create a new line, go uh, on the line below. And uh, part of that, you have a lot of functions available uh, in QGIS, uh, which are uh, sorted by type, uh, that you can also search. And uh, if you're searching for one, uh, you can uh, click on it and you will have some information, uh, some help about it. So uh, it seems that uh, you are a bit shy uh, today or maybe sleeping after, after the lunch, I don't know. So uh, I will, I will go myself on, the, on this one, and uh, maybe Joan will go for the, for the next one, I don't know. Okay, contains following, nice. Uh, the idea may be here, uh, if you want to have uh, our display, basically, uh, this, uh, this display, uh, it would be just to say, okay, I would like to have my area name uh, first, then adding uh, a new line, and adding all the icons. Okay, basically I can go uh, on my uh, expression field and say, okay, uh, I'm searching for my uh, field related to the name of the area, so going on field and values. Uh, I believe it's name. Okay, don't uh, forget that you have a preview here. And I think that in the last uh, version of QGIS, you can have a preview for each, uh, each area or each uh, each row of your table. So it's really interesting. Uh, and now, okay, let's say I would like to add a new line. So, okay, 
concatenation. New line. Okay, so as you can see on the preview, uh, we are gaining this line. And now uh, I would like to add uh, my icons. So as I said, uh, we're using the icon fonts. And uh, so we will need to use uh, the field uh, that displays the symbol related to the icons. So for example, let's go for the first one, so which is this one because it's the one with text. It's a name binary at the end. Okay. As you can see here, okay, it's working. I have this, but well, maybe you see, okay, it's uh, really not an icon, what I was saying, but uh, if I'm doing that, okay, I can see that in fact, I have uh, my symbol uh, well displayed uh, just below, uh, just below uh, my area name. Okay. So uh, let's continue. Maybe uh, one, uh, this one, yes, I need to open it. Okay. Uh, it could be uh, possible to go, uh, okay, like this, with going for each uh, field uh, and concatenate all of them. Okay, I'm going fast, environment, NGO, and so on. Oops. Uh, uh, okay, so first, this could be working, but as you can see, uh, for this area, it's not uh, displaying. What's happening, in fact, uh, is that uh, whenever QJS encounter a null null values, uh, the expression stop. It's uh, it's giving me a null, as you can say on the as you can see, sorry, on uh, the preview. It's not uh, the same for this area. Why? Because uh, it have uh, all the type of project in it. So as you can see, this is uh, already uh, one big limitation to know. And how uh, can I contour uh, this? Uh, I don't know if it's an English word, but uh, how can I face uh, this limitation? Uh, one way would be, as I said, to use uh, my uh, the, um, the field, virtual field, yes, okay. So to create this, I'm going into my attribute table. I'm creating a new field, okay. And again, it's already uh, still the expression panel. And this one, I'm saying, okay, I want to create a virtual field, uh, which would be uh, uh, icon uh, concatenate. I can go further, I think, okay, it's stop here. It would be a text, and this uh, text would be just a string, uh, which uh, give me all the the string, all the symbol uh, inside my or my field uh, related to the icon fonts. I don't know if it's clear, but the idea would be just to go do the same as I did for the label. So going uh, for I don't know if it's this one. Or it's this one. Okay, binary. Uh, concatenate with this one, and so on. Do do this. Okay, I'm making this quickly. Okay. Uh, this way, uh, I can go. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I can go like this or use the function just. Checking a bit. Yes, okay, I need to use uh, the function too. So I'm updating. Okay, so as I said, uh, it's not working still because uh, I'm using the row uh, concatenation and if any new uh, value is encountered, uh, it stopped. So, uh, okay, I need to go again with my virtual field and uh, And uh, now I will uh, find the uh, concatenate uh, function. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, I think now it's the it's the one that's using string. So concat, and just uh, adding this way my field. And it could manage uh, null uh, values this way. So I can go. With a comma between uh, between each, 
And now it will be working. Uh, it's uh, not okay what uh, I did, sorry. It's not funny if it's working. Uh, if uh, I, I never remember which one is to use, but I, I think it's this one. I just forgot to add this at the end. Yes, okay. It was a mistake from my, my side. Okay, I think I was just missing a, maybe a comma or parenthesis, I don't know. Okay. So time is a good one. Uh, now, as you can see, it's working. So I'm deleting uh, the two other one. Just not to have any issues with it. Okay. Now that uh, I have my uh, virtual feed ready, uh, it could be easy to display uh, display our icon uh, inside the label. And also, it will be really easy to update it. Because um, whenever uh, the field will be updated here, uh, it will automatically update this uh, concatenation uh, uh, field. So knowing that this one is coming from my Excel uh, table, I know that when I update my Excel table, it will update it uh, this uh, in my project when I reopen QGIS. And then uh, I will go, uh, it will automatically up update this field. And uh, I saw the remark of uh, Ant. And uh, yes, I think that uh, one way would be also to use uh, some uh, conditional logic, such as uh, if it's uh, superior to zero or uh, if it's not new. So it's, it could be the other way. There is never one way to do it. But the idea would be to have this field ready. This way, uh, we can manage it directly in our label, and it will be uh, updated, updated uh, automatically. Uh, yes, and I see that you won't need the binary columns. So uh, it depends on the structure that uh, we want for the other labels. And uh, that's a choice we've made for the other uh, label coming, uh, coming after. So knowing that, we just need to update our uh, expression and setting uh, our field, which is this one. And this way, we have no new values and it will be managed. So now, as you can see, okay, I can have an understanding of what's happening in the Suntai or GAT, of uh, what type of project do we have here, and so on. Okay, so this is the first uh, kind of uh, labels uh, that we, we can do uh, inside QGIS and that can be uh, dated uh, automatically. Second one would be uh, directly, so, so this was the idea of uh, concatenation. And I, I will see uh, maybe after, and maybe you will notice, uh, but uh, one big limitation of the labeling uh, expression in QGIS or labeling is that it's not possible to display uh, different colors for in, inside the one string. Uh, it's possible in other uh, language, uh, for example, in ArcGIS, uh, because you can uh, have attribute of uh, RGB or hexad hexadecimal code uh, inside our string uh, to give uh, any string colors. It's not possible in QGIS. So one big limitation uh, is that um, uh, we'll have only one color, and if we want to change it, we'll need to go directly into another software, such as uh, Inkscape, for example. So for now, this is big limitation 
for this kind of maps, but uh, maybe it will come uh, after uh, in QGIS, uh, who knows. Uh, no, we would like to make a second type of uh, labels, which uh, is text labels. So, uh, same as before, we would like to have our area name and a below a uh, name of each uh, project uh, in the area. So maybe I uh, give you a few minutes um, to write in the chat, whatever, to raise your hand. I, I, I think that nobody wants to speak today, but if you want, do not hesitate. I give you one or two minutes to make some tests uh, on your own on QJS. You seem really hyped and uh, it's really nice. He would go for a smile uh, inside uh, his uh, label, I think. Okay. So, uh, going, changing uh, my layer. So, I've prepared three uh, layers for each uh, type of icon. This way, you don't have to lose uh, what you did. Uh, now, I want to display. Uh, my text labels. Same as before, uh, maybe first you would go for uh, the name. Okay, go into a new string, adding a project name. And uh, okay, I'm going for this, adding so three project name, so four, sorry, project name field. And uh, I think we're facing uh, the, same, uh, the same issues because uh, it's giving, uh, it's encountering uh, null uh, values. So, but it's not the case uh, for, uh, okay, I forgot to, to add, uh, new line and doing it now you always need to add a concatenation uh, even after a new line just to let you know okay okay I have added one. And this one here okay. same as before we can see for a new uh, pick uh, it's working well because uh, all the projects are filled because we have four projects inside. Uh, and it's not the case for every uh, area. So this is the same. Uh, just a quick uh, tip. Maybe uh, sometime you will not have uh, null values inside your table, but you will have empty uh, values. Uh, when you have empty values, uh, the string uh, will continue, will work, let's say, but uh, it will replace it with an empty line in this case. Uh, for example, if uh, the third one, HHH, is uh, empty, but not null, uh, you will have a blank line in here. So it's important to know uh, how QJS is working with this kind of data, because uh, if you're working in a uh, any uh, data or information management, you know that uh, empty or null values are not exactly the same. Uh, so we could go for uh, something maybe uh, logical, uh, such as uh, and mention. So for example, with a if and uh, a condition just after. Or uh, we could go for another uh, function that's uh, available uh, in QGIS, and that could be uh, really useful and nice to know uh, in our case or uh, in any advanced uh, expression uh, like this. Uh, this is uh, 
the coalesce uh, yes coalesce uh, function. So I've already used it. That's why, but it's uh, also a condition. And what a coalesce function is doing is that uh, it will return the first non-null value uh, from the expression list. So this way, uh, we can add coalesce in each line of our expression. And uh, this way, uh, we could go, uh, let's say, uh, if uh, in this line uh, we have uh, null values, uh, uh, do, not, uh, do not use it. It's, it's what's happening in the back. So in fact, it can uh, allow to avoid uh, this uh, limitation of null values. And we can try uh, this together. And this way, we can also put inside this function the, uh, the, new, the new line uh, operator, uh, because uh, if there are no value uh, to display, uh, we don't want to go on another line. And it can uh, our, uh, our values, our project name, uh, properly uh, in our label automatically. So for that, uh, I will go uh, inside of here. Okay, new line, and I will go for the coalesce function. I will open my uh, parentheses and put it uh, here inside uh, this. Uh, actually, it's not doing much because uh, I believe that. Uh, okay, no. Actually, because some have not uh, not first project, and what uh, need to be added is an empty string. Uh, I think we'll see uh, after when all uh, the thing will be done. Uh, just to be sure. Okay, I'm adding empty string. So we are adding empty string to avoid the null. Uh, so if we have null value, we are getting empty values. And it will be displayed at the end of the line. And uh, it's like we are not seeing uh, this empty value. So it's a trick uh, that's working well uh, in our case. Uh, it's been a while, so I hope I'm not making some mistakes. And last one. Okay, same. Okay. And as we can see on our preview, it's working well because it can manage uh, some area with only two label uh, uh, projects. So two fields uh, that are only a field and the two other ones are null. And it can still display them. So if I hit OK, it's working well. Uh, okay, it's not really uh, beautiful because of the, these fake names, but uh, as you can see, we can manage to have uh, this uh, different label uh, manage even if, uh, let's say, one uh, have no project inside or one of one only project and so on. And as before, uh, it's really easy to update uh, this. Uh, because uh, it will be recalculating uh, each time because it's in the expression uh, field. Now that we can make this, uh, we can make almost everything with our uh, data structuration for today. Just checking quickly the chat, okay. For example, uh, if we want to go for the third type of label, which is uh, icon and text labels, uh, it will be really easy. So I'm going to duplicate this one to, avoid, to lose too much time. Okay. Going into this one, single labels. No, uh, not that I can do this. It's really easy because I can just say, okay, uh, now let's add uh, my uh, yes. Let's add my icon uh, related uh, to a project, for example. 
So we would go for, uh, let's say, uh, agriculture icon. And we can add, uh, okay, I would like to know uh, here uh, which are uh, the number of projects in uh, agriculture in this area. So I'm just adding agriculture uh, number. I'm removing uh, this and that. And I can do it for all type of project. I will do this quickly. No, I want the icon of uh, Watson. I also want number of Watson project. Uh, then next line, I want uh, education project with the um, number of education project. Next line, I will do it only for maybe the first one. Next, I'm going for environment and number of environment uh, project. Okay. Uh, yes, actually, I can go for everything. It would be maybe a bit. We have time, I think. So, NGO, and I also want. Um, number of NGO. I think I move too much. So. Okay, I can uh, I can stop here. I think. Um, I hit OK. As you can see, uh, it's working uh, well uh, because I have uh, I can know actually in inside each area uh, what kind of project I have and what what number do I have. So as you can see, it's stacking a bit uh, labels. So one way uh, to do it to manage uh, this uh, would be to go directly in our expression. For example and to insert, uh, let's say, um, you can go either for a empty string with a space, or you could go, uh, I don't know, you, you want maybe to add two points uh, like this with uh, empty string, maybe it's better, I can for that. Uh, I forgot to add the last concatenation. Uh, sometimes it's a bit uh, hard to follow on this expression panel because uh, the line are not uh, aligned and so on. So I hope it's okay for you, and do not hesitate to 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 type in the chat if I'm going too too fast or or whatever. Okay, and this way it's having a really better display. And for example, we could have uh, after the four. Uh, we could, of course, display uh, to explain what it's meaning. If we don't want to add too much in the legend, for example, whatever, just for you to know, uh, we could add, uh, for example, concatenation, let's say, with a space, number of, or just project name. Maybe. This is a good point because I don't know if I need to put a, a S or not because it depends on the number, but okay. Let's assume it's okay. And now it will be displayed like this. So, uh, okay, welcome back. Uh, uh, no, the, you, you can do almost whatever you want with this kind of data situation. So I know that it's really specific to uh, what uh, I've made for the workshop of today, but this is the kind of uh, structure that we use, for example, for the AFD map. It's working well, and uh, it's really uh, custom customizable, but uh, sometimes you can have a really uh, big and strong expression, but uh, don't worry. In fact, when you, uh, when you read it, it's really easy to understand. One thing uh, that we can do now, uh, now that we can do our labels, 
is maybe uh, it's already done in my projects, but sometimes uh, it's really hard to display the label uh, in our map. Uh, and there is a way uh, to do uh, to manage this in uh, QGIS uh, 3 uh, with uh, this uh, button. So if you don't have uh, this button, uh, don't worry, you just have to right click on any uh, part of the toolbar and be sure to have the label toolbar enabled. Okay. And inside of this, we have many things. We can uh, able, uh, enable uh, unplaced labels. It's interesting, in fact, because, uh, for example, if you're uh, in Zoom like this, you don't understand why uh, it's uh, missing some, but uh, in fact, it's just that they are uh, unplaced. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, one thing that we want is uh, this one moves a label or diagram. Uh, what's happening inside uh, with this? So we click on the button, we click on one labels. And as you can see, we can, uh, we can see uh, highlighted uh, the area related to this label and we could uh, move it wherever we want. For example, I want to go here, there, whatever. And uh, it's really interesting to do in our case because we'll have uh, sometimes big labels and uh, we will need uh, to have the area clear for uh, some understanding of uh, the region, for example, to see the city. But we could also uh, want to display data like I show you in a street volume example, for example, of uh, uh, colors by uh, depending of number of projects and, and so on. And what's happening on the back with this uh, displacement of uh, labels is that uh, QGIS is uh, creating uh, two fields, uh, which is basically uh, an X and uh, an Y, so like a latitude, uh, longitude uh, uh, data, uh, to know where to place uh, the label. So understand that uh, we will need to set it at the scale that we want because on the export, uh, this would stay at the same uh, like scale. So be sure of uh, the placement you're making and make some tests on the uh, export uh, uh, tool of, uh, of QGIS. Uh, before uh, having some tests on the, our update project to show you how it can work, uh, I just want to make maybe a last point because I know that uh, some of you uh, have never used uh, icon fonts. I just know that uh, basically icon fonts are more used uh, to display, uh, to replace uh, single symbols in uh, QGIS. For example, uh, this is a layer uh, for my uh, localities. So I don't care, let's say it's uh, another thing. Uh, I could go uh, on a single uh, symbol, okay. And uh, just to be sure uh, where it is. Yes, I think it's coming some place here, okay. When I'm selecting my single symbol, I can have uh, my type. And here I want uh, a font marker. And this way, I can manage to use icon fonts as an icon for any points uh, in the map and not only in my label, just to let you know. So for example, I've put two uh, Ocha icon fonts inside the folders uh, of uh, today's project. Uh, so, which is Ocha icon bounded and unbounded, you will see the differences. And, uh, I can then uh, change, uh, maybe I will open the size just for you to see. Uh, just, I don't remember well, uh, where, okay, this is, a, I can uh, choose uh, all the icon and you can see you, are, you have all the basic uh, icon for humanitarian maps and I can choose uh, any of them and uh, set this. So, for example, I could have a categorized uh, display uh, depending on the capital level. I, I don't know, it's, it's not inter interesting here, but 
just to give it a try. And I could change uh, the type of, uh, okay, I think it's an images. Okay. Uh, Sometimes I have a problem opening a second window with my uh, screen resolution. So just for you to understand that we can manage uh, icon fonts directly into our uh, symbols uh, layer. So this is a good way. And if you uh, don't want to uh, use this one, you can go for the unbounded, which is the same, uh, but uh, it's filled uh, this, this time and have not uh, bond, uh, have no struck uh, outside. It can. Okay. Now uh, we'll have still 20 minutes, so I think I will try for 10 minutes uh, to make an update in my map and uh, have an export of it to show you uh, how is it working. So first I will make an export of this. So uh, for this uh, workshop, I've created a template for uh, export. So this is this one, you can have access with this the managing uh, yes the show layout manager, uh, the layout manager. Select this one, double click on it. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have our uh, map, and as I explained, sometimes the scale, uh, some label are not uh, rendering well uh, depending on the scale. Uh, this could be a change uh, we make. Uh, let's say it's not important here. The important just is to have our map exported. So uh, I've already made one export inside the folder shared. Uh, I'm doing one again. So test export, let's say. Uh, exporting in the PDF. It's not really important, it's to show uh, that uh, it would be an easy way to update uh, all the process. As you can see, if I don't understand uh, much QGIS, it's really easy to open a template which is already uh, May, made and uh, to export the map as a PDF and the map is ready to be shared uh, online or whatever. Uh, now uh, let's go back on our project and uh, maybe update this uh, data. So as I said earlier, this data is uh, stored on our local folder and it's an Excel uh, database. So I'm going back to it. Uh, I need to find it. Uh, okay, I'm doing it under the screen. Okay. Inside. This is... Uh, okay, I think it has some display problem today. Sorry for that. Okay, so I'm just uh, opening uh, the XL6 uh, file. And uh, no big surprise, uh, it's the same as uh, we saw on uh, QGIS. And uh, for example, uh, here I want to make some updates and to be sure that uh, they are uh, working live uh, before. Uh, I'm saving my project. And best thing would be to close our project, in fact, so when you blank project, just to be sure that nothing is working uh, on the background. And okay, make some update. Uh, here, what we want to update would be, for example, a number. We could uh, type big numbers just to be sure that we will see, see them. And uh, okay. Maybe let some with nothing, just to test. Okay, I don't know. Okay, so you're pushing maybe, maybe, maybe just like that. So, okay, basically, and the idea would be for our partner here to uh, adjust uh, this binary field uh, depending on the number of projects. So for example, uh, as I said, if there is only uh, at least one project inside my area in agriculture, I keep a symbol. This is the case here. So it's okay. 
here we have one, so I need to impact one. Okay. Uh, we don't have anyone in this area. Okay. And so on. So this would be here we removing all because I don't know why, but there are no Watson project now. And uh, so on. So transport. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I will uh, do it randomly now because uh, it's not really important. I save my project, my uh, file, sorry. I can close it. I'm reopening my project. Okay. And uh, as you can see, uh, automatically it's uh, up to date. So it's uh, not rendering well because I only made the good rendering for the first line. But uh, you can see that we have 24 projects, 20 projects. Uh, we have no Watson. Uh, yes, we have no Watson. So it's working uh, really well. And it's exactly the same for our thought. And now I can, uh, I can uh, open it again and export it, uh, export it in uh, PDF. So it's, it's really basic. Okay. Uh, we still have uh, 10 more minutes, a bit more even. Uh, I could show you one last thing maybe, but I'm going for a Zhongi question first. Uh, could this labeling be combined with QGIS2 web export as uh, demonstrated yesterday or no advanced labeling will not be exported uh, into the web map? Uh, actually, this is a good point. I've never uh, think of this. Uh, I don't know if we can give it a live try. Yes, okay. And he's really hyped with this, so let's go. Uh, okay. For the one who were not here uh, yesterday during the workshop, uh, this is just a plugin uh, that allow you to export your project, uh, your raw project in QGIS as a... So not going any further into that. Uh, giving a try. So uh, yes, it will be really strange because uh, I'm sure my uh, country are maybe really big in fact because it's just some polygon that I've uh, that I've made so I don't even know if it's a fitting inside the inside the extent of uh, the library I don't think so uh, that's too bad uh, no I uh, actually it's sometimes okay not to work with any uh, CRS uh, directly, uh, if you, for example, don't match here, it's okay. So it's just that, uh, for, I don't know, we could try just for you to, to see that. If I had some OSM background, uh, I don't even know <laughs> where's my OSM background inside this project. Okay, you, you can see my, uh, my country is maybe uh, really big. Uh, so uh, we could not have a, a try on this. I'm sorry, but uh, I will uh, maybe let you know um, about this. This is, uh, this is actually a good idea to try this label on, uh, on, the, on the export tool uh, plugin. Uh, sorry, jean -Guy. can uh, can try this one. Uh, I don't know if you don't have much more question, and uh, maybe I can show you uh, quickly uh, uh, the use of templates uh, in uh, QGIS, because uh, this is one point I uh, would think that I won't have any time to, to explain, but uh, since we have some few more minutes and uh, no question. I will go into it. So as you can see here, I've created a really basic uh, template for QGIS, but it's uh, working uh, It's working well. 
And I think that it's really uh, important for uh, for you, for example, as a GIS officer, to to use this kind of template because it allows you, uh, as I said, to avoid uh, any other softwares to update uh, maps. And this way, we are improving uh, QGIS. We are still pushing QGIS to, to its limit. And uh, we are not dependent uh, of um, of any more, any other uh, software such as uh, Inkscape or Illustrator to to make some um, some customization of color or anything. Uh, I'm I'm taking three more minutes and then uh, and uh, I will give you the the mic because you I seem that you have some tip. Uh, it's just basically uh, a row a blank uh, a blank sheet where uh, you add everything you want and uh, inside you prepare your map and it will be automatically uh, updated as I see okay my nose is not showing okay and it's really basic you can add everything uh, coming up from this uh, toolbar and then you only have uh, to save it uh, as a template and this way you can use it uh, after you can share it uh, with anyone you want and this is a good way uh, to enhance uh, your uh, your practice of uh, of QGIS. Okay, uh, so and if you want to to speak about uh, maybe uh, table labels, uh, I give you the floor. Uh, yeah, thanks, Gilles. Yeah, it was just to mention that um, when you were talking about table labels, one thing I did reasonably successfully in the past was to use um, HTML annotations uh, and Excel. So if you set up named ranges in Excel, so for example, if you if you create some nice little tables in Excel and, and set them as named ranges, then if you publish the Excel to HTML, that each each named range will be published as a separate HTML file. So you could set up, for example, um, if you just have six regions, you could set up six named ranges with a little pivot table for each um, for each region, and then you can import those um, HTML files into QGIS using a, an HTML annotation. So every time you the data gets up, updated, you can republish the Excel as HTML and reopen the QGIS project and it will give you the latest data. So that, that kind of gets beyond some of the limitations that you've got in QGIS because you just get, effectively, you just get a little window in QGIS which shows the uh, Excel table or the part of the Excel table. Yes, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, that's maybe a good way, uh, in fact, yes, to link this to, to our uh, data. And uh, could this be a updating uh, easily or do you need to share uh, your uh, Excel uh, database as HTML again? So yeah, every time you, it's, it's not updated live. So every time you change the Excel, you need to re-export it as HTML. Okay. But it's a, it's, it, you know, it's just effectively it's a save as. Um, so you need to remember to do that. So it takes a bit of time to set up because you need to, you know, create the named ranges and then reference them in the HTML annotations. But once it's set up, um, as long as you remember to do that saving and, and reopening, it gets it gets kept up to date. Okay, really nice to know um, about this yet because uh, I didn't want to go uh, further into this kind of label because it could be uh, a lot of work and uh, it's sometimes not uh, working uh, for data visualization, that's not, I think, what we want uh, for uh, some quick map or uh, some easy, easily uh, shared map. So, okay, nice to know. Uh, so, well, uh, so uh, Nick, uh, got a question about uh, expression for a virtual field. Uh, if we can, uh, can we see uh, it directly? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one problem would be that uh, 
the only way to edit it um, inside uh, QGIS would be to go with, um, I don't know what it's called, the open field uh, calculator. And I'm not sure that we can uh, update this field uh, manually, of course, because it's uh, stored in the background as it's uh, updated the line. And I think the only way uh, would be to update an existing field. And uh, I know that uh, as it's a virtual one, you can uh, have an update of this one. So it's really uh, a shame because uh, as you see in my presentation, I, I made a few mistakes in making my virtual field and I can have an, an easy uh, update process of it. So I will need to create a new one. So in fact, no, you can have access to, to the expression uh, unless, uh, unlike, sorry, uh, in uh, Excel because it's not working in the same way. Um, yes. Gilles, um, I think that you can do, uh, but not going through your attribute table, but using the layer properties. Um, when you go in the field tab, uh, if you created a virtual field, it will appear um, in your table as as an expression field. And at, at the end of this, uh, you can update the, the expression. So there, if you go in fields, Okay, yes, okay, okay, my bad. On, on the uh, left, you see, and there okay. and there you can update it. I, I tried yes. first from the attribute table, but from the attribute table, it seems that you cannot, so you should go through the layer properties to update it. Okay, so nice to know also uh, that you can manage this uh, directly, and uh, maybe I will stop to create a new uh, virtual field now, knowing that. And uh, okay, so it's uh, still a few minutes, so do not uh, do not hesitate. And I see that uh, and uh, you've shared some uh, some uh, thing on the chat. So yes, first uh, the work from from Map Action uh, for the icons for JS. Uh, if you go in the chat, and also uh, some templates uh, that are made also by by Map Action. So as you can see, the use of template is really uh, interesting uh, in the sector because uh, we can share it and uh, have a template ready to use. So even if you want to make some try on QGIS, do not hesitate to, to download some that you will find uh, online, for example, on GitHub uh, with the link of end. You will be able to get the video of the recording. Uh, I had a lot of connection problem and I miss some passages. Uh, know that uh, the, the recorded session will go uh, on YouTube. I don't know when, uh, uh, but uh, I think you will uh, have access to it uh, really soon. But I will also uh, send you uh, when this will be out, the link of uh, the tutorial to create your icon font and to use it in the label expression uh, that will uh, be uh, on the carto blog. Now, coming out, I think, in the, in the months. So don't worry, I will keep you informed about this. So, okay, I, make, I miss uh, something from jean -Guy. Assuming you have more plans to describe a project, can you insert a return to line instruction to have your icon on two line? Uh, actually, I don't think uh, so uh, directly. Uh, but maybe uh, with a logical uh, a logical way, as Ant explained, I'm not sure if the string is uh, more than uh, this. Uh, do that, I, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, okay, so I think we can uh, conclude uh, this. I hope that is, it was interesting for you and maybe that you've learned some new tips and tricks on uh, QGIS. Uh, it was really interesting for me to to show this to you and uh, to have some exchange with you, even if you are a bit shy. And I want, also want to thank uh, to thank uh, Marie uh, 
for the moderation. Thanks to all <laughs> and see you later. <laughs> Thank you, see you around. Bye.